this video, we're going to start a conversation about custom web publishing with the FileMaker platform. Now to be clear, this is a deeper, more complex conversation. It's what we refer to as the deep end of the pool in the world of FileMaker. So some of our videos are very simple in nature, learning the basics of relationships and things. This video is the opposite where we're going to get very technical. Now it's critical to frame this conversation and to discuss what our options are for publishing FileMaker data to a web browser. So we're talking about web browser access to some sort of FileMaker data. So there really are two ways of doing this. One technology is called WebDirect. WebDirect is where FileMaker takes a layout in FileMaker and then it attempts to render it automatically onto a screen in a web browser. WebDirect is really designed for your team to access a FileMaker database with a browser. Now when I say your team, I mean your employees, your staff, or maybe even trusted third parties, maybe like outside contractors or outside vendors, to access a web page that contains FileMaker information on it. If you have a core team of employees and they're using the database all the time, then I generally recommend that they don't use WebDirect, but they use FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Go as their first choices for database access. So that's WebDirect. Now a second method for accessing FileMaker data with a web browser is using custom web publishing. Within custom web publishing, you generally have three ways of accessing the data, one of which is PHP access, the second is XML access, and the third is with REST or FileMaker's data API access. Now that last one, that FileMaker REST data API, is new technology that came out with FileMaker 16. The PHP and the XML access are older, more mature technology. Now I have not done a lot of training on custom web publishing with any of my videos and any of my courses. And that's largely because this is very deep, complex material. Most of all our videos are designed to bring up lower level developers or users and make them more intermediate, maybe even senior level developers. But this custom web publishing technology is really intended only for senior level developers. People who are new users or somewhat intermediate in the world of FileMaker probably won't be able to build PHP pages that are able to talk to FileMaker server. However, we're going to go ahead and start this conversation and this is video number one of multiple videos where we talk about this technology. Now keep in mind that we pointed out that WebDirect access was really intended for your team to access a database. Custom web publishing is really designed for anonymous access. So if you are building a registration site to collect registration information from a group of people out in the public, well those are anonymous users. You really don't know who they are until after they have registered. Whereas your team of users, you pretty much know who these people are. You pretty much know their names. And so FileMaker makes a licensing differentiation from people who you know who they are, that's basically your team, versus anonymous access, which is the random public. And that's one of the key deciding factors as to which way you should go when looking at web direct technology as opposed to custom web publishing. FileMaker's licensing is tuned with this model in mind. So once again, if you have a team of people, you have 12 or 15 or 80, 100 people, but you pretty much have a list somewhere of the names of all these folks, then you know who they are. If you have known users accessing your FileMaker solution, then FileMaker is going to basically give you the best deal and the lowest price for providing access to that group of people. If you have anonymous access where you really don't know who the people are, FileMaker charges a premium if you want to use WebDirect. Now on the flip side of that, custom web publishing is either free or nearly free, depending upon the license that you have. But the trick with custom web publishing is that it requires a real programmer writing real code to make it work. 
With WebDirect, you can still kind of drag and drop and build a layout that will render on a browser. And so this is where the license on the FileMaker side is much cheaper, but you're going to pay a lot more for the development to be done. If you're building it in WebDirect, the development cost is much lower because frankly it's much simpler to build what you want to build, but the flip side is that the WebDirect costs are much greater. So there's this balance between how difficult the development is as opposed to the licensing cost. So going forward with this video and the following videos, I'm going to be showing you different very basic sample files of how you can build basic PHP or HTML pages that can talk to a web server and also interact and get data in and out of a FileMaker database. So what I want to do is go ahead and jump in and show you these free samples right now just to kind of show you what we have going. And specifically what we're going to do is make these available to you as free samples. And these are very, very simple samples because the intent here is that you're learning kind of from scratch. So what we have is a very simple demo, a more intermediate demo, and a very high-end, nice, professional demo. So the difference with these three demos is that all three of them are going to add a record to a contact database in a copy of FM Starting Point that we have already set up running on a FileMaker server. All three of these will add a single contact's data to that database but each of these is progressively more complex because it's progressively better, right? And you'll see what I mean by better. So once again, we have a copy of FM Starting Point set up on a FileMaker server, and these pages are wired up or coded so that they will submit information to that copy of FileMaker server. Now, of course, when I give you these sample pages, if you want them to actually work, you're going to have to wire them up or customize them a little bit to get them to work with your own database on your own FileMaker server. But this makes a good demo so you can see what these can do when fully set up. So I can hit the sample page here and you can see that it's very simple, very black and white, very kind of ugly, right? This is kind of old school internet back from the old days, but when you're learning the basics, this is where you start. I'm going to make this window a little bit smaller right here. And I'm going to look over here in FM Starting Point, I see that we have 126,927 records. So basically 927, right? And so that's the number you want to look at. And if I go over here and I put my information in, and I'm going to snap my fingers to kind of fast forward here, I can scroll down and I can press the register button. Now this register is basically a submit button, and I can move the window here a bit, and you can see this. And basically what we're doing is we're submitting this arbitrary information into our FileMaker contact record over here. So after I've hit that, there's a little bit of a delay and we get to 928. So when I press the submit button, it takes the data here, it submits it to the web server that is installed as part of the FileMaker server on this piece of hardware, which is a dedicated server, and all the information flows through a number of processes and it gets added to the database. So this is part of the simple demo that we have for you. We're going to cover this more in future videos. Now if I go backwards a bit we have a plain example and this is my middle example that we have set up and we've put some validation on it. So that's the difference between the super basic and this intermediate one is that we validate it. We want to make sure that some of the fields have been filled out. So it's kind of this mandatory situation where you put in some information. Now once again, this isn't an overly beautiful layout or web page, but once again, we're keeping it as basic as possible so you can learn by taking these files apart. I'm just going to put some uh, junk uh, text in here and I'll put in I'm in Arkansas and I'm going to go ahead and put some fives in here and the website and comments are not required and I'm going to go ahead and press the register button again. So once again a moment ago when it failed the validation this page did not add a record. So we were still at 928. Now if I hit register now it says success and so now we have 929 records. 
So we have a very simple demo with very low technical skills required. We have kind of this middle of the road plain one. And then we have this nicer example. This is more of the high-end standard that professional developers are using these days. Once again, if you're learning this stuff for the first time, you're going to want to start with the more basic ones and progress your way forward. This newer one uses JavaScript with jQuery. And I'm sure you're thinking like, what? Well, it's just more technology that makes the tech more beautiful, more interactive. It just makes it nicer all the way around. Now notice that the fields are required, it makes them red. Once we finish putting the data in, it kind of turns them green. What if I hit register? Whoa, I'm still missing some data, so I have to go back and put that information in. So once again, I hit register, I have sufficient data in, and it submits the record into the database. Now we're gonna cover some of the conversation about the middle of the road sample to kind of get you going in your learning. We're not gonna dive into the complex JavaScript jQuery sample because frankly, that's not the course that we're providing. There are other courses out there that dive into that. My job and my intent with these videos is to introduce the major concepts that you're going to need to understand. And in the next video, we're gonna be talking about the major software components that make all this work. And just as a preview, we're gonna be talking about the FileMaker server core the web publishing core, and the process of how FileMaker visualizes the data that you're sending through the web server to the database and how it looks at that and how it thinks about that because it's very consistent with other things that FileMaker does. For example, we're gonna talk about how it requires usernames and passwords and you have to have the appropriate level of credentials. And that's all contained in our next part two video. If you have any questions and you want to ask us about this, feel free to email us at support at RC Consulting. We'll try to get the questions answered for you.